feeling better already, ain't you? Yeah, yeah. There's so much power in the gospel. You can sing it, and it works. <laughs> you know? all right, so, all right. Well, it's my honor and privilege and humbling. It's an answer to prayer to stand here and get to introduce to you, Pastor Dan Muller. Come on. I know it's fun and excited, but I'm going to turn serious on you right now. There's a brother here we got to call out and really pray for, okay? I want you to join me. He's been walking around for a while, and he only feels like half a man, so I want to lay hands on him. There's challenges and things like that, but you've got to live from God towards everything. You have to understand that a life's a gift. You got this little window called life in the flesh, in the body, to manifest His great name. You got this little window called time that's here today and gone tomorrow. And there's one reason you have this time is to be like Him and to manifest Him and bear witness of His image. If you read Scripture, it's the reason man's on the planet. Amen. The reason people are on the earth is to be found in His image. Yes, it's the only reason man's on the earth. And you can have a blast, you can have fun, you can have a great job, you can have a recreational hobby, but the whole time you pursue His image and the whole time you live in His image and you mark men's hearts with who He is. Yes. And you leave a legacy for the King. And that's what will stand the test of time. We're not trying to make it to heaven. Heaven's come inside of us. And the kingdom of God is here. Yeah. And we're going to live His great name. And we're, we're not going to live what we were yesterday apart from Him. We're going to let something new come through Him. We're, we're not going to live with the same attitudes, the same emotions, the same mindsets. The gospel demands change. It calls for change, but not in a controlling way, in a truth-filled way. And he says, he comes and says, I'm the way. He's not our way. He's not a good suggestion. He's the way. He's the truth. He's not our truth. He's the truth. Yes. And he's the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me, he said. So he's your access to the Father. And knowing the Father is eternal life. Not praying a prayer to go to heaven. Knowing the Father is where you enjoy the expression of eternal life. Because you're one with the eternal one. That's right. Yeah. And now you're never going to die. Why is that? Why is that Christian? Why is that part of the package? Because He never made man to die. That's right. He made man to live in Him forever. And He said, the day you live apart from Me, the day you eat that tree is the day you surely die. Why? Death wasn't in the picture. The reason you have life evermore, He redeemed the truth. He brought us back to original value. The reason we have eternal life, eternal life is, shouldn't be the carrot. It, it's, it's part of the package. It's, it's not... It, being in Him and being found in Him and living this window called life on the earth, that should be the highest motivation of your Christianity. Yeah. Not making heaven someday, live in heaven now. Yeah. Having the right mindset now. Walking in peace now. Showing mercy now. Yeah. Walking in love now. 
Today is not the day to have a bad attitude. Be angry and let your heart be deceived. It never was the right day. Don't find justifications for being less than him when you're created for his image. And he said, follow me. He said, as, as he is. 1 John 4, as he is, so are we in this world. He said, the things I do, you'll do if you believe. As the Father sent me, so I send you. Firstborn among many. They're all scriptures. It sounds like he makes us one. He says, all authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me. Now you go in my name. Yeah. <gasps> Do you need any more scripture? I have it. I read this book called the Bible. And it's amazing. And it teaches me to think ways that the life, that life never taught me to think. It shows me things I never knew. And the things you... You doing good? You're fun. I like you. I see life in you. Yeah. You've really overcome in him. Yeah. You've had challenges from the beginning. He changed some things for you. I see it in your eyes. Makes me happy. Yeah. Makes me happy. Makes me want to cry. I got to stop looking at you now. You're making me cry. I'm supposed to preach. No, don't do that. I can't hide that. I read the Word of God and I start seeing how God thinks. I, I start seeing that the way He thinks is the total opposite of the way I grew up thinking. There's no way to receive him and not get your mind renewed and walk this thing out. You, you can't incorporate him into the way you used to be. He becomes new life for you. A new way of thinking. A new reason for being. Like Jesus is, he's, he's not religion. He's not, it's not just Christianity. It's not going to church. It's, I mean, you have to attend, but the whole reason you attend a, a gathering, and if we're on the right page, the whole reason you assemble together is to stir one another in love and good works. Yeah. So you never turn inward. Get self-centered. Get sorry for yourself. And this the reason why he came. The whole reason we don't a, forsake the assembling ourselves is so we stay focused and life doesn't sneak up on us and deceive us. Yes. And all of a sudden we forget why we're here. And we forget who we are now that he came. Amen. And all of a sudden we miss and lose sight on the reason for being and why we wake up. I promise you mercy woke every one of us up today. Yes. And the first and foremost reason is to give you one more day to be like him. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. <laughs> That's a good day. Yes, it is. Well, it's so good when you live that way because you start feeling good about who you become in Him. It's not vanity. It's not the world's pride. It's not feeling good about yourself in a weird way. You start loving who you've become. All of a sudden, there's no secrets. You look in the mirror and you love what you're becoming in Him. You love what truth is doing. And you actually, for the first time in your life, really, truly feel good about yourself. Yeah. And you don't need anything from anyone. And all of a sudden you have something to give because you're not in need. Amen. <laughs> See, if I need you to know who I am, I'll never be able to love you. And how you treat me will dictate who I am. And I'll only be as good as you're doing me or seeing me. And I'll live insecure and I'll be subject to your impression. Do you know how many good-hearted Christians still live that way even though they're sincere about forgiveness? And sincere about repentance, but they don't understand these kind of truths. Whew. I said it all morning this morning. We are not here to survive. It still burns in my heart. We're not here to survive. For some reason, I stand here in this place and this is nice. <laughs> yes, it's nice. <laughs> he, he loves it. He said, I just look at the people worshiping God. I mean, we're in a, we're in a cattle selling barn, room, <laughs> looking at worshiping God. And he's like, <laughs> Jason, you're awesome. You're all cowboy, buddy. <laughs> I can hardly hear him because I'm looking at this guy that needs prayer. <laughs> that to me is ministry. <laughs> he's been cut off, man. <laughs> like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> See, we're laughing, we're having fun because God doesn't want you overwhelmed by what I'm saying. He wants you inspired. Yes, right. I say all the time when I try, I didn't come to spank nobody. I came to tell you who you are through the cross. Yes. 
Your life is worth living. The blood of Jesus says that. If you believe in anything else, you believe in lies. You've got to get your eyes back on the truth. You can only find your true identity through the Son of God if He's the truth. Amen. You can't find your identity through your childhood, your upbringing, your parents, uncle so-and-so who touched you wrong. You can't find your identity through your friends. You find your identity through Him, and that creates healthy friendships. Amen. You find your identity through Him, and that's a healthy marriage. Yeah. 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 You find your identity through Him. You learn who you are through Him. The way He sees you is the way you begin to see yourself. The way He values you, you begin to value yourself. The way He forgave you, you begin to forgive yourself. Yes. And move forward, out of then and into now. So you can be fruitful. Yeah? yeah? There's no looking back. You're not Lot's wife. Don't look back. You're His. That's right. Look up from whence came your help. Don't look back. You're stuck between where you came from and where you're heading. You'll be frozen right there. And you'll still go to church, but you'll be frozen. You don't look back. There's nothing back there. He gave you the present and things to come. Why? He bought yesterday. He paid for it. Give it to him. Let it go. You bought it. You can't say, well, you don't know what I've been through. Stop. You're missing the point. What has he been through? Amen. Doesn't that mean something? Doesn't that change you? If you hook up to what he's been through, doesn't that make a difference for you? Yes. When you realize the price he paid, you have to say why. And you have to realize he's seeing a whole lot more about me than I've ever seen. He's seeing a whole lot more about me than you've ever seen. And at some point, i got to hook up the truth and find freedom. And go, my life is worth living in him. Or he would not have died on that cross. This thing is not just about forgiveness. It's about transformation and redemption and restoration to truth. It's about becoming the person you were created to be. It's about him putting his life inside of you. So you can be like a river out of your belly flowing living water. It's not just a well springing up into heaven. It's a river flowing out of your belly. That's different than a well springing up in everlasting life. A river out of your belly is different than a well springing up. The well springing up is your salvation. It's life in Christ. The river flowing out is Christ in you touching everybody around you. It's you filling the thirsty and flooding the dry ground. It's you saying an end to the days of complaining and frustrations and attitudes that don't produce life. Saying an end to self-centered thinking and feeling sorry for myself. And I wish they wouldn't. And how come they had to? And I'm so mad. You say an end to that thing because it never produced life. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> if the attitude you've been tricked into isn't producing life, it can't be from the Lord. That's right. It's the wisdom of man. It's human reasoning. It's the spirit of this age at best. If it's not producing life, it can't be the Lord. Because He came to give you life and life more abundantly. Amen. You cannot get tricked into letting your identity be wrapped around something that happened to you or something someone did to you if His name's not Jesus. Amen. I'm telling you people, I feel it with a passion. I know you see the passion. I'm not doing it on purpose. I feel a heart cry in my heart and God saying, because you're willing to believe it. I'd say it if you weren't, but I know you're willing to believe this. And you get this. You guys are like sponges all weekend. And there's new people here and new faces, but that same passion and grace is on me right now. I'm going for it. Your identity is found in Christ first. And only then will you have healthy relationships. You've got to see who you are now that He came. You've got to understand how God sees you through His Son. And you've got to see yourself that way. And receive His first love. And all of a sudden, you love Him. And all of a sudden, that love becomes yours. And you love one another. Amen. And all of a sudden, it fulfills all the law and the prophets. And you love God with everything you are. And you love your neighbor as yourself. But wonder if you don't see yourself good. How can you love them? Come on, some of your neighbors are saying, get a revelation first before you try to fulfill that scripture. <laughs> <laughs> Love your neighbor as yourself. Wonder if you don't see yourself good. Yeah. Wonder if you're nitpicky and fault-finding with yourself. Wonder if you're self-condemned. Wonder if you have a low esteem and a bad identity. You're going to see what's wrong with everybody. You won't see their destiny. You'll see their faults because it takes the pressure off of you. And you're not the only egg in the basket. And other people have their issues too. And the eye you look at yourself through is the eye you'll behold others in. You love your neighbor 
as yourself. That means we're to have a healthy view of ourselves through the cross. There was a time in my life I didn't like me at all, and I needed you to like me to believe I was likable. I needed you. It's like an addiction. It's no different. I needed you to say I needed you to laugh at me at a joke. I needed you to say something kind to believe my life had value because I didn't like me. You know what I'm saying. There's people in this room, you know what I'm saying. From little up, from the time you can remember, life was trying to tell you who you were because you didn't know. You were born with no identity. You were finding yourself along the way. And at a very short age, you were nothing more than how you responded to how it all went down. You let somebody laugh at you in third grade and you know they're making fun and two people you like laugh with them, you're crushed. And you either become introverted and broken or a fighter. But it's not you. It's what you're being manipulated into through a lost identity, through emotions, feelings, and pain. And all of a sudden we realize one day, whoa, I was born into Adam, and Adam had no clue who he was, and what he was created to be was lost through sin. And I was born into that lost place, and I'm nothing that I was created to be. But Jesus paid a price to get me out of darkness into the light. Wow. And instead we turn this to a prayer that saves me someday when I die. You're supposed to die now. <laughs> die already. Unless the seed dies and falls to the ground and abides alone. It's all alone. If you make your Christianity all about you and all for your sake, and all you do is pray for your sake and blessings, and it's just all about you, and your spiritual language is just wrapped around your little world, you are missing it. You are not producing anything, and in the end, you'll be all alone. You won't produce nothing. you release what you call faith all about you, and your benefit, and your blessing, and, uh, make, and you'll think everything's against you and about you. And... It's a lie. Die. So you can live. Yes. It's about him living through you. Yes. It's about him shining through you. It's about him giving through you. It's about him sacrificing through you. Yeah? It's about him showing mercy through you and making peace through you. It's not about you holding people so accountable. You be careful. Well, somebody got to hold him accountable, not you, friend. <laughs> Back off of that thing. You don't even have the God given right, the grace won't even go with you. You try to correct people outside of love. You'll create more of a mess. You might be right, but it won't make it right. Factually, you might be totally right. You just correct your children because you're frustrated, because they pushed you too far, because they disrespected you as a parent. Because if I told you once, Billy, I told you a hundred times, just get to your room. That's a good way to hurt folks. God has never treated us that way, and He had never taught us to treat no one that way. Because it's a self-centered expression. You're taking men personal instead of the gospel, and you're proving that you have a fuse that's short, and you have lines to cross, and a chip that can be knocked off at any moment. It makes you actually vulnerable to the strategies of hell, and all of a sudden, people buttons get pushed all around your life, and you say, why is God letting this happen? He's not. You're positioned for it. Yeah? Come on! You don't just correct people because you're frustrated. Are you kidding me? You don't correct your children because you're mad at them. You correct your children because you're teaching them they're so much more than what they're giving themselves to. And in that, you begin to implement the beauty of family and class participation and how we all make up the whole. And you start imparting life and truth into them in the midst of discipline. And the reason you discipline is because you're teaching them they continue to live that way. It's going to bring pain into their life and cost them things. So why don't we settle it now and teach you while you're young? But just snapping and getting mad at folks never helps no one. Right. In the long run, the devil tells them that's how God is, and God's mad at you right now. Some of us say, well, God saw that. Well, God saw you do that. And you're misrepresenting the Father's heart the whole time. Right. And all you're doing is expressing your frustration towards them in the name of the Lord, and that's deception. Yeah. I don't know why I'm on this, but man, if the shoes fit and kick it off quick, <laughs> and just say, duh. <laughs> Never again. Don't you get condemned by what I'm saying. You get inspired and be changed. You might have made this mistake for 15 years with your children. Don't you say, oh, I blew it. No, no. You trust His redemption. You trust His mercy. You sit there in your seat and say, whoa. 
man, I don't want to do that anymore. I've done that. God, have mercy on my children and mercy on my soul and help me and empower me to be different and show them what repentance looks like and teach me what love looks like in my correction. And you watch what God does. Yeah? yeah. yeah? Don't you get condemned and say, well, my kids are like this because I failed and I'm a miserable parent and well with me and shame on me. <laughs> Come on, that's what people do. They just write off, man. They don't physically kill themselves most of the time, but they just sign off and take the blame and live condemned. And honestly, there is suicide going on a lot if you want to talk about it. Yeah. You know what I see? This is the most deceived action a man can get tricked into because here's what happens in suicide. Let me talk to you plain tonight. I'm going to anyway. <laughs> Let me tell you what suicide is. It's the gravest deception in active man. Here's why. He's getting deceived into taking something that's not even his. Oh it never was your life. It's his life in you. Right. Yeah. And you get so self-centered in the fall of man that you actually think you have the right to take something that's never been solely yours. You say, well, it's my life. It never was, friend. It's always been designed to be his life in you. And two have always been one. So when somebody takes their life, they're taking his life in them and they're cutting off destiny, purpose, potential. Suicide is the biggest tragic lie. And the devil gets people tricked into taking what's not theirs. Well, it's my life. Well, you can leave me alone. I'll do with my life what I want. Grave deception. Never was your life from the beginning. Jesus said, unless you deny yourself and pick up your cross and follow me. Well, unless you deny yourself and pick up your cross, you're not going to follow me. That's virtually what he's saying. He says, if any man come after me, let him, Matthew 16, let him deny himself, pick up his cross. Why is denying himself first? Why doesn't he say pray a prayer to make sure you get your name in a book called life? <coughs> Jesus didn't say, if any man comes after me, make sure he prays a prayer called the sinner's prayer so he gets his name in the book of life. He said, if any man comes after me, let him first deny himself. Why? You and me were never created for you and me. You were created for his image. Do you put metal in a microwave? <laughs> Wasn't made for that. Read the manufacturer's handbook. You put metal in a microwave, you'll ruin the product. Read the manufacturer's handbook. People weren't made to live for themselves. You live for yourself, you'll ruin the product. So the first thing you do to be a Christian, the first thing is deny yourself and realize, whoa, this thing ain't all about me. It's about Him in me. So in an intimate way, it is about me. He loves me. He loves my purpose, my potential, my created value, my destiny. He has never lost sight of the truth of why I'm here. I'm not a throwaway. He hasn't given up on me. There's no way. Love will never fail. He'll never change his mind about who I am and why I'm here. Amen. And he proved it with the blood of his son. Yeah. yeah. The faith gets excited about that and says, yeah. Not that you have to react. I'm saying you believe that in your life. Yes. Amen. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And you put on Christ. And he said, if you do that, you deny yourself. Listen, I'm convinced of this. I'm personally convinced of this. I'll say it boldly. The biggest problem on the earth is not politics, it's not the president, it's not terrorism, it's not racial stuff. The biggest problem on the earth is men living for themselves when they're made for His image. Yes. Right. Amen. It's the biggest problem. It's the biggest perversion. And all this is to the believer. So if you were the enemy, what would you attack? What men believe. And you'd get men to attack what men believe. And you'd get men to fight over this stuff and get vile over this stuff and vehement over this stuff. Ain't that something? So I guess this war is on belief system. These signs shall follow those who... The things I do, you'll do if you... He's not just talking about miracles, guys. He's not just talking about supernatural power. He's talking about his heart, his love, his mercy. Yes. We say your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We always talk about the power of God. And we say there's no cancer in heaven, so there's no cancer on earth. And he gives us grace to pray and faith to pray. And it's true. It's right. I'm not saying it's wrong. But it's something how we always talk about the power of God and miss the heart of God. Yes. I wonder if your will be done on earth as it is in heaven has more to do with the heart of God than the power of God. Yes. There's no animosity in heaven. There's no competitiveness. There's no jealousy. There's no first impressions. There's no judgments. There's no disappointment. There's no anger. 
There's no gossip. There's no backbiting. There's no looking at people and weighing them for what they're not. And only seeing their faults. There's none of that in heaven. Your will be done on earth. What's he saying? Receive my spirit and receive the power to become like me. Because I made you for my image and you're lacking no good thing. And as I am, so are you in this world. Whew, come on, I got too much scripture on this thing. How much scripture am I giving you? A little bit, huh? Tying it up, there ain't no way to escape. You'd have to willfully say, I don't want this. Or listen to hear for something you don't agree with and not even hear what I'm saying. Be careful, they did that to Jesus all the time. Jesus was talking totally infallible truth. And somehow they always came up with a problem. That's scary. <laughs> that men have the ability to be so self-righteous and so full of themselves and so proud in their theology that they can listen to Jesus himself and critique his message and come up with why he's wrong. Yeah. That's startling. Yeah. <laughs> you ought to be a little slow to speak, slow to anger, and quick to listen. That's what the Bible says. Slow to speak, slow to anger, quick to listen. What have most of us been in our lives? We pop off, got a whole lot to say, we're angry, we don't want to hear it. <laughs> Be real! The Bible says, slow to speak, slow to anger, quick to listen. We're ticked off, got a whole lot to say, and don't want to hear it. That's alarming! What does love do? Lay down its life for another. What have we done? Live at the expense of another. The total opposite. We were perverted through sin. We were lost. Yeah. We were trained by another way. And then the way came. Uh -huh. yeah, and he stood before us and we beheld him in grace and truth. And he said, follow me. He invited us into his life, not just his blessing. Yeah. Oh man, am I preaching good to you. <laughs> he invited us into his life, not his blessing. He invited us into who he is. He thinks a lot of us. He knows who he made us to be. He knows our potential. He knows our purpose. And love has never lost sight of truth. On your darkest day, he said, I know who you are and what you're here for. And I won't change my mind. Jesus treated more wrong than any man could ever be treated. Biggest injustice on a man ever. You could never surpass the injustice of crucifying Jesus. It was the biggest wrong in the history of time. Amen. And the best love could say is forgive them, Father. They don't know what they're doing. Love was way bigger than offense. And love said, they're blind. They don't know. If they knew, they wouldn't be doing this. That's why when Peter was preaching on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came, and they're all praying in tongues, and people were mocking and scoffing, and he stood up and spoke from the prophet Joel. And towards the end of his speaking, he said, This Jesus, this Jesus, whom you crucified, and the Spirit of God hit him, man, bam, right between the eyes of their heart. And total conviction flooded them, and they knew they were guilty of the death of their Messiah. There was no escaping. It says they were cut to the heart. You search that language out. It's pandemonium. They were throwing dirt in the air. They were tearing their clothes. They were pulling their hair. They were freaking out. They were convicted of killing the Son of God by the Holy Spirit. And there was no way to escape and get in denial and talk themselves out of it. Their hearts knew that His blood was on their hands. And little flashbacks were coming to people and they were picturing going, Barabbas, crucify Him. And the Holy Spirit goes, bing. <gasps> and they said something to Peter that's amazing. And they weren't asking a question. They were in despair. They said, men and brethren, what shall we do? It's not a question. It's despair. They're saying, we've gone too far. What shall we do? Where do we go from here? We killed the So This is an 85 and a 65. This isn't running a red light, which you will never do here. 
<laughs> I've noticed. Look, if you ever leave this area, there are lights in intersections. <laughs> if they're red, stop. If they're green, go. I just want you to know, if you ever leave this area, there are there are.